started. Fight! G'day guys, Andy Work here. Welcome to the first continual episode of Featured Fan Builds, or as I'm calling it, uh, Show Me The Modded Thing. I'd like to thank Captain Xavier for allowing me to do this. All hail the great bearded train summoner. Having said that, I'm no Captain Xavier, so there'll be no silly hats or funny voices. It'll be the normal Captain Xavier format, a few featured ones at the beginning, and then a slideshow at the end. I, f I felt that was the best way to do it. People get their stuff seen. On that note, I'd like to have a disclaimer for this first episode. Uh, I only had one submission via the usual channel of people emailing me information to show me the modded thing at gmail.com. All the others on this presentation, I've actually reached out to those people. They're people you may have seen online on Facebook and certain other places, simply because I like the look of their blasters. And I'm going to put them in just to fill out this first episode. I'd just like to say to those people who I reached out to to get um, blasters, I'm not doing you any favours, guys. You're doing me a favour. I didn't have any content to fill this. I asked you, you great, graciously sent photos, uh, it, movies in some cases, which is great, and I'm, I'm really appreciative, okay? And that's just for this first episode. I expect people to start emailing me stuff soon. And if you send something and it doesn't get seen, just resubmit it. Now, getting on to the blasters, the first one was a young lad by the name of Nerfob. He's the first one to send me uh, a submission through the email, so I think he should go first. And here we have the blaster from Nerfomp. Uh, he says this is a strife made to look a bit like Cable's BFG from Deadpool 2. It's been re rewired with out of darts 2S 950mA lipos and uses cyclone wheels and OFP times monkey mods Aurora cage. Shoots about 146 foot per second uh, without the barrel. The barrel assembly is a couple of talon claws welded together. And underneath is an M203 looking barrel he got off a Nerf Strike, it looks like. A very nice looking gun. Reminds me of the Thompson, I suppose, because of rear butt stop. And in his email, he's even uh, mentioned how uh, there's a bit of a taboo about black painted Nerf guns. That's why he's added the orange tips to his, his uh, blaster here. Um, I'm a cosmetics guy and I do you know, realistic blasters, and the re I have a reason for that, as I was commissioned to make some for a, a, a low-budget film in Western Australia. The film never got made, but the blasters did, so, and I found I enjoyed it, and I just keep doing it. I don't run around in the street with them. They stay at my house, in my shed, and that's about it. You carry a black blaster like this out in the street, you're, you're in a world of trouble. A little bit of common sense, guys. All right, moving on. Slyn Odenton, great name. He made our next blaster. Long shot basic cosmetic paint job uh, with a small mod to carry darts. He doesn't say where he's carrying the darts, but maybe it's in the butt stock. Um, I'm quite amazed by this from the point of view that this first photo you see, it's a very blocky, clean, sharp paint job. And then he's done what he refers to as uh, made a light weathering and she was finished. Well, I'm pretty amazed at how well that weathering or sponging it looks like um, has blended all that in and I would say there'd been a colour change somewhere along the line. I've never modified a long shot. I don't particularly like the look of them. I've used a lot of their parts in some of my builds but I'm yeah, leaning towards doing one. One thing I've got to get rid of is that silly bipod at the front. I just do not like that at all but I think it'll be easy enough to 3D print a handle over it. I very much like the um, Arctic camouflage. Well done, Slyn. Now next up we have Jeremy Z, and it's another long shot, and it's really nicely done. I particularly like the front foregrip. He's got rid of that silly bipod, and he's using one of my blasters I've never been able to get one of, a Firefly. I think it's just so cool because you've got the whole uh, thumb hole stock all in one. All you've got to do is glue it onto the back of a blaster to make it something interesting. And this is really interesting. I like the OD green, the military look to it. He's left a couple of orange accents on it so people know it's a toy, which is great. Looks very nice. And I even like the way that he's managed to partially bury the carry handle. If somebody can tell me what the front is um, that's wrapped around the handle, that ventilated fore end, I'd be really grateful because it looks 
fantastic. I've got to use one of those somewhere. Very nice work. Well done, Jeremy. Right, guys, next up we've got a Caliburn by Jade from Foam Dermic. It's, uh, she says it's an Indra with a Sim Thumb whole stock, Curry Cafe anodized barrel, custom Silly Butts barrel collets, powder coated Tough Pro 25. And if anybody can tell me what all that means, feel free to contact me. No, seriously, uh, I like the Caliburn since it's came out. I've never had an opportunity to get one. This is pretty interesting, just the colouring of it. It's so vibrant. And, yeah, and this rear run really shows the rear round off really well. It's just a very pretty blaster. I like it. And I'm imagining with all the custom, it shoots really well and it's very accurate and all that sort of thing. Somebody tell me about the Caliburns. How are they barrel drag-wise with, you know, the length of that barrel? And it's... A good example of what I've talked about in my um, request for images on a plain background. Okay, it's on steps and they're a little bit busy, but straight lines and it's mostly this grey colour. So the blaster really shows up. It's really, really presented well. Both images you can see just different angles. It's what's known. The first one is what's known in the business as, you know, a, a beauty, a 45 degree beauty shot or something like that. Very, very nicely done. Clean, sleek, lovely. Good one, Jade. Love it. All right, our next one is uh, a piece from a fellow by the name of Guzmo. Uh, here's his build details. It's a simple quick 16 as a base with a modular storage stock and top off a code breaker crossbow to sit above the jam door. Attached to the stock, stock and top with automotive putty, sand forever, then automotive body filler, sand forever, repeat automotive fine scratch, sand filler, Sand, sand, sand. He, he's done a lot of sanding on this, guys. Um, and then about, by my count, about 15 coats of different types of primer and undercoat and top coat. And I think it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous thing. The detail he's put into this. The Just, you know, it's so unusual looking. And I think it's fantastic. Apparently other people didn't. He got a bit of a, a bit of flack for it. I don't know why. People do different things. I mean, if we all made the same blasters, there'd be no point of these videos, would there? Um, so, yeah, let people do what they want. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Um, I know that sounds like a very old cliche from a very old person. I think it's great. And I love the, the colour contrast. The purple and the orange go really well together. And the metallic shine, oh, it's beautiful. It really is. And it could be, you know, obviously an alien weapon. The Quick 16, I've, I've looked at, I don't think I've ever found one in a thrift, thrift shop. I've looked at them online and I've always felt the, um, the backward curving magazine was a bit odd. But he's taken that and turned it into a plus to make it look really, really interesting. I, I honestly can't find fault with this. It's really nice. Well done, guys. Yeah, looking forward to more of your work. Okay, guys, the next one up is the Radioactive Waster. It was made by uh, Rex Tex Builds for his friend RJ Lindemeyer. And here's the build details. I took an all-black Raven with stock cage wheels and turned it into a beast with Neo Hellcat, CC Infernos, and a custom cage from Roboman Automation. I also wired up a MOSFET from OOD just to be safe. It hits about 130 FPF and is surprisingly accurate considering it has nearly 10 inches of barrel. I also did a cosmetic overhaul that included detailed painting, printed parts from Jace 3D, a battery stock from Thingiverse and a muzzle by MJ Mods. For the cherry on top, I stuck on some custom vinyl decals. Overall, I'm very pleased with it. And I'm pretty happy with it too. I always like a, um, a nice raven. I, li I like, one, the safety factor, all this yellow, which is great. Outdoor games are not a problem. And it's just neatly done. It's clean. It's sharp. Uh, and I spoke to RJ uh, via the magic of mobile phones and internet and all that the other day, and he's absolutely wrapped with it. He loves it. I don't believe he said he hasn't used it that many times yet, but when he does, it's a pretty powerful little toy. Rex Tex Builds has an Etsy site. If you're after anything, you could go and have a look at that. A very pretty little build. Okay, next up is Al the Geek with his little feature, which is a Blitzfire from Dart Zone. He says it's they hit a lot harder than Nerf straight out of the pack. 
and all he'd done was uh, black vinyl dyed it, a bit of plutonium orange, and then some Taminia paints to finish it off. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. It is amazing when you compare it to this photo of the twin pack in their pack that he bought. They look so cheap and nasty, and just a little bit of addition of paint. It's amazing, and that's a great place for the beginners to start. Just do a pistol. Just do something small. So you can get one, knock one of these over in a weekend. Um, and this is gorgeous. It just looks so good compared to what it looks like in the package. Um, he's done a brilliant job, but I love this. This is great. I'm going to have to keep an eye out for a pack of Dart Zone Blit Fires. Well done, Al. Looking forward to the next one. And finally, we've got two pieces from an online friend of mine, uh, John Toma. I believe he goes by Ginger Snap Arms on Instagram. And here's the first one. And this is a Nerf Kronos with a Destiny theme cosmetic mod. No internal upgrades, he says. He wants to mention Rearmory on an Etsy shop, which did the muzzle and pistol guard. Uh, and it was for a post-apocalyptic LARP, he uh, does. It's quite cool. You'll see from these little videos, it's got a mini reactor in it that powers the weapon. And if you need a little bit of extra power, you can hit a little red button on the base and it goes into overload with a flashing red light. And if you leave it too long, it'll really go into overload and have a mini nuclear meltdown, which sounds so cool. Very nice work, John. Love the paintwork. Really love the flashing lights and stuff, and I really should do some more of that. And one thing I really do like is what appears to be a jam door off a retaliator that ho houses the um, little reactor. I just love you repurposing details like that. It's really great. Well done. Next, here's this beautiful hero that uh, John has just finished as a commission for a friend for a post-apocalyptic laugh called Afterworlds. This build is entirely cosmetic since it's meant for a lower FPS cutoff for a LARP, which is, makes sense. You don't want to hurt anybody. The hero is... Already a great platform and didn't really need a boost in performance for it. This build is about 95% complete in that I need to add some decals and final markings. Like most of my projects, it's mainly kit bash from graveyard, uh, my graveyard of chopped up blasters and boxes of greebles. Tell me about it, John. I've got dozens myself. The barrel is an old ball pump and a muzzle of a Busby snipe. And the scope came from a deploy while using the plastic shroud from a Nerf QS4 Fame pistol, which I think is really well done, especially. That deploy handle is integrated so well you'd think it was part of the actual original model. Uh, he's even got a backstory, and you know me with backstories. I love backstories. Here we go. There's not much known about this weapon. It belongs to an advanced android of a model never seen before. All that is known is that it was developed by an unknown organisation called the World Robotics and History Coalition. They sound terrifying. Uh, which seems to have been underground for over the last 20 years and only since rose from the ashes of the apocalypse. Both the android and the weapon are in a high state of repair, showing little signs of weathering and bearing the scientific markings of experiments from a lab. Well done. Love it. Love it. And I think this thing is just so well together and it looks like it'll be used by a robot there's very little in the way of comfort there's hardly a buttstock there's just functional things um, pistol grip foregrip and the firing mechanism and even i like the detail he's put on the uh, magazine i remember talking about that, that maybe suggesting it he i'm not trying to claim credit for it but he's done it really well he's got rid of what looks like a tube and made it look really interesting so well done, John. Absolutely love it. Put it in a, in a package and send it to me right now. I want it. Okay, that's it for now, guys. Um, since I didn't receive any other submissions, I'm simply going to end with uh, that old familiar theme music and some of the photos of blasters I've collected over the years just for personal inspiration, whether it's shape or design or even the colour scheme. So I hope to see you next time, and I hope to see lots more emails in my in inbox before then. Bye for now. Shut up and sit down.